And hello, everybody. Let me take my headphones out so I can actually hear things. Gotta love the audio setup. How is everyone doing today? I don't know why I just went Mrs. Doubtfire mode. Let's see, we got Eric and we have Vincent in the chat. Hi, guys. How are you? How's the uh, audio? I, I got this new list of uh, spooky songs set up for October and uh, the kids and I had fun this morning going like, that's spooky. No, that's not spooky. That's just weird. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how they're all going to balance out. I think I have the settings where we need them. I hope. Going around just a little bit here. Um, so anyways, today I'm going to be doing the, based upon the votes that we did last week, the Ghost King from Reaper's Bones Minis. And I'm looking forward to doing this one. I did do, as I always do, just a quick, very light wash in a simple black. Helps me see the details a little bit better so I know what I want to do with it as we're going along. And let me just check something here. Da, 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 da. This is always the fun thing of like getting things. I moved something and now I can't. There's the window. Oh, yes. Good evening for Vincent. That's true. So, hey, Jeremy, you just jumped in too. How you doing? All right, so today we're going to be doing this guy, and I want to make him super duper creepy. So he, hello, John. Audio is good. Thank you, Jeremy. You're always my dependable guy to respond back with that quickly. So this is going to be like super creepy color combination. I'm going to do like, bl not blues, but like purples and greens. And he's going to have this very sallow, yellowish face, which unfortunately I found out after I put the wash on, his face got a little wonky in production because it's kind of like this smush to the side type thing that happens sometimes but we'll work with it so yeah that's the plan and uh, I am using all Vallejo paints for this guy so far so I will let you know the colors in the description at the end of this once we figure out what gets used in this video and then that way if you want to recreate for those who are watching now or later on hello Chet how you doing that way you can recreate so uh, this is basically sort of where I'm going with colors, but you know how I am. Sometimes I change it up. So this is the styling of greens I'm going to go with. And of course I will share names exactly. And then for the cloak, we're doing, well, we're going to start with a light brushing of black, but bring it up to some purples, those royal purplish colors. And then this is what I meant by the, well, skin tone, because he's a ghost, you know, we're working with it, but we're kind of going to give him these sallow, green undertones and yellows to him so a lot of that's gonna be pulled through and then he has his weapon which we're just gonna do something you know kind of like a neat reddish metallic this one's called teeny tin which reminds me of not by the hair my teeny chin chin so yeah that's the plan so what i'm gonna do first with him is i'm gonna first take the black and work through putting it more towards the back area of the cape because i want to have it darker towards the center of the cape and then draw it out to the brighter colors and we're gonna get started with that. So let me see here. I have a very busy week. That is for sure. I have a game tonight. It's a one shot on mini terrain domain. One flew over the cockatrice's nest and that should be fun. Looking forward to that. I get to be a silver wormling. Her name's Leoda, which is Welsh for moon. So I'm really looking forward to that one. It's gonna be myself and some other awesome players I'm going to leave you with that little teaser because you have to come over and you have to watch it. We start the game at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Jake is always good about making sure that the video is up and ready to uh, watch pretty much right after we're done playing the game. Yeah, the figure is pretty darn cool. Hi, Dennis. How you doing? Um, this is one of those things I've had sitting in... <laughs> in a drawer for like almost a year now, I hate to say, but <clears throat> before we did my art space, Storage was very much a limiting factor. So it was one of those things where I had tucked him away and quite frankly had forgotten we had him. And it turned into one of those things where when we redid the whole art desk area and did the pegboard and storage, I was able to hang up all my minis that were still in their packages. And that's when I saw him and I realized, oh yeah, I forgot we had him. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to do a vote of all the creepy minis I have for October and see who would get priority. So like I said, I'm just doing a very thin coat on his cape just to kind of get a darker base set up. Did a winter theme for him. Oh, that's pretty cool, Jeremy. Yeah, I always like seeing how people decide to paint their minis as uh, everyone has their own little interpretation. 
I mean, God, just look at the holders in and of themselves that are, you know, the WizKids ones. Talk about variations. I mean, yeah, there are some people who just go for the straight classic Xanathar or just, you know, the beholder on the main cover of the book. Uh, others give them their own spin, like I did with mine, which is also really a lot of fun. I know this one woman she's got, I want to say she has six of them now, and she's done them each differently, and it is so cool. She actually painted one of her first ones at Origins, and that's where I met her. She actually showed up to a few of those classes, so there you go. You can see how I'm kind of getting yoink. Pull it over to the side. Of course, the paint still lets you get that lovely little glare. All right, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a black and kind of just tuck it into the deeper portion of the, I guess, scales of his armor would be the way we're going to call this. Because I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a working from a black to a dark green, a very dark green, to a lighter green and so forth down the scale armor. This almost reminds me of sort of like an insect. I don't know why, but this particular set of armor is kind of exoskeleton-ish. That's what it is. It reminds me of an exoskeleton. So yeah. So I have that game tonight on uh, Mini Terrain Domain, uh, also known as Mutadu. And then tomorrow night is Sunless Citadel, and that is with Scotty. He's on that one as well, and Megan, and Jeremy as well. Different Jeremy, not the Jeremy in the chat. <laughs> Hello, John. Uh, today I am using Vallejo paints. However, it's uh, anyone's guess, depending on the mini I'm doing, because I'll do uh, sometimes my craft paints. Sometimes I will use Citadel stuff. Sometimes, like I said, there's Vallejo. Depends on the colors I want and the mini I'm painting. So, But today's definitely a Vallejo day. And I'll show you what I'm using as I'm going along. Right now it's just black. Basic black and I'm just going in here. Hello James, you didn't miss too much, just my prattling along and adding on some black here and there. Now right now this does not look neat at all, nor did I intend it to. This is uh, this is the way I work. Chaotically. <laughs> In case you never noticed. But yeah, he's gonna be a nice creepy dude, that's for sure. But yeah, we have Sunless Citadel tomorrow night, which I love playing that one. That one's so much fun. And then I've gotten asked back to Scraticus to keep playing my half-orc barbarian, Lieutenant Commander Ilara Gibbis, who basically I'm kind of playing her as a wharf-like character, and she is a lot of fun. Very much enjoyed that last week. I'm always flying around in my broom. That's not news. That's just my thing. And again, anytime you jump into one of these things and I'm giving you information, check back in the description like within about an hour or so usually and all those links will be provided as well. Uh, da -da -da. So yeah, busy week, but it's fun stuff. So I will take it. Okay, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is let me just tuck a little bit more up there. Let me see. Oh, I didn't consider his helmet. I think I'll do his helmet. Probably that same metallic. I'm going to do the sword. Let's see. What's going on here with audio? You've got no sound. Check and make sure that you didn't hit audio off on your own YouTube end of things. Because I have different people saying their audio is okay. Do I know a way to remove acrylic paint? Uh, what's it called? Well, I know some people use brake fluid. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Uh, green. Why am I blinking right now? It's not green stuff. There is something you can purchase. Eric, if you're still in here, what is it that you use all the time? You use something that you like the way it works really well. Um, yeah, the purple power cleaner stuff. The... I think some people have used that like goo off. Uh, the, the big key is if it was sealed or not because then it's involving soaking and everything like that. What I can do is I can put in a few links from conversations from different groups to help you out there. 
Uh, off the top of my head, honestly, I'm not sure because I have yet to really need to strip things completely. So I can't speak from experience. I can only speak from what I hear from other people who paint minis. Um, so just keep that in mind. I'll find out and I'll let you know. All right, I'm gonna move on to first using dark green. Very difficult color to remember. Right now I'm shaking up dark green and I'm gonna start putting this onto the exoskeleton insect-like armor. <laughs> now what have you guys all been up to over this past week since I'm seeing a lot of familiar names popping back up again? Oh, come on. This paint does not want to come out. Question of the day, am I gonna be using this? Thank you, Eric. Yeah, you'd be amazed what can kind of make paint fall off things. Yep, there we go. Huge clog. Fun! Luckily, you didn't have to see that one. <laughs> Let me just clean this up really quick. And then... Ruh -ruh. Hey, did I get on my other project? A little bit. Ooh, just a little bit. Yeah, my son's going to be Doctor Strange, and I'm making the uh, cape bits. But unfortunately, that got a little splash of green. Okay, there we go. Unclogged. This is the first time I've used this green, too. Well, I got plenty out now. We're good. You have sound again. That's good. Okay, so Eric's recommending LA's totally awesome. I had to do the voice. There's no way around that one. It's like totally awesome, dude. All right, so I use my uh, wider flat brush at this point. I'm just going to be dragging this down. And this is this is basically base coat mode today. We'll see how far we get in the hour. And obviously, if he's not finished today, we will finish him up next week. But I go in with my wider brushes and just uh, get the basic colors down first, and then I'll go back for fine tuning. But there you can see the green getting put on. But you can see what I mean? It's sort of like this layering of uh, scales almost. Like a scorpion. It's reminding me of a scorpion. Simple green. That's the green I was thinking of. Thank you, Eric. Could not remember that name. Yeah. I hear of simple green being used by a lot of people and recommended by a lot of people. So that's another one I'd say you could try out and see if it works for you. And go from there. Now my husband is planning a sort of... Uh, Halloween-esque game to play with some friends and the kids, and I have a feeling this guy will be making an appearance. And since he's a ghost, I'm going to try and give him sort of like that moldering fabric look as well, which is why I'm kind of going in with this black sort of mottled round to help give that undertone a start. to the chest plates area. Cuddling nurses mainly it's a tough life. <laughs> okay. You're lucky you got some nice nurses there. Figured after this guy is done I can always go back to the others left over from the vote and re-vote to see uh who will get dibs next on being painted up. Oh, cool. Are you doing a homebrew there, Jeremy? Or are you going to be doing a 
something already out there. I always like hearing what people are going to be doing. It's neat to see, especially like if they normally do homebrews, but they're going to jump over to a prefab. You never know. Making some progress. And this guy is definitely going to be getting a wash in uh, brown for sure. Again, because I want it to have like that mildew, moldering, you know, fabric that hasn't exactly been taken care of because it's been sitting in a coffin. That type of approach. Can't believe we're already in October. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am thrilled. This is my month. But it also kicks off our busy fall season now, so I'm kind of like, oh yeah, we have all of these things to have happen now too. Yeep. That's part of his gauntlet. I don't, I'm not going to paint his gauntlet. It's the same color. That's not happening. That's going to get a different treatment of color. Alright, so we're going to let that green dry a little bit. But here he is. Started. Nice and creepy. What I'm going to do now is get his face started. Inspired by a Pathfinder, inspired by a Pathfinder adventure called Hangman's News. Oh, cool. Hey, BJ, how you doing, bud? Thank you for joining. If you haven't checked out Initiative Coffee, get over there. Check him out. He works a lot with Bill Allen, both great guys, and I get to see them next weekend. We're doing Friday night, right? I think we landed on Friday night. Aw, <laughs> oh, sorry, Eric, I know. That does sound really cool though, Jeremy. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I'm not familiar with it, but it does sound good. I do need to get a paper towel because of the no free time in October. What's got you busy in October, Chet? <laughs> I just have a lot of games going on and with um, well, getting Halloween costumes pulled together and events at school and the kids' soccer, holy moly. It's a busy time of year. It really is. All right, now I'm going to move on to the face, and what I'm going to do is put on the Cayman Green first, where the face is, and that's going to be the undertone, and then I'll go back in with Dead Flesh, quite appropriate, and that's going to be what I'm going to use to sort of like highlight the face. I'm not going to get too technical with it. Just kind of give it a two-color treatment. So hopefully this one, yeah, we're good. Just a drop, as opposed to a splurt. Splurts are not fun. I am also going to switch to a finer tip brush simply because we are doing Friday. Okay, just making sure. Oh, that works out nicely. Thank you for joining. Ah, uh, planning periods. I remember those. Goes to this dude who was hung for a crime he didn't commit. Ooh. Oh, that sounds really cool. Thank you for sharing that, Jeremy. That's that's a neat one. All right, I'm gonna get into yeah. That sounds nifty. Yeah, his face got a little smooshed in the making. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It was tempting to kind of paint this guy to look like Skeletor. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if I would have been able to paint him without cracking up hysterically the whole time. Yeah, that's what I thought. The hands are not covered. <gasps> hey! I know you! It's ooh, Chameleon Fam! Ooh! He... As a, he or them or I'm not actually you were quite a mystery I gotta tell you this uh, jumps over and watches those games that I was just talking about over on Miniaturian Domain one of our biggest fans absolutely adore you you've been a huge help with those domain dice so thank you so much I appreciate that 
I love your participation. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Chet. Hall or uh, fall and Halloween, all that stuff. It just makes things fun. I'm also putting this. Uh, what was it called again? Came in green. Onto his exposed hands. Well, they're hands. They're rather skeletal-looking hands. His gauntlets. I'm going to do the same as his helmet. So let's see if I'm gonna. You can kind of see there. It got a little cockeyed, but I mean. He's a ghost. It could just be he's sort of fading off. We'll play with it that way. That that's that's our story, and we're sticking to it, right? All right. Let me get the other hand. One, one, and ah, ah, ah. Two. I don't know why I'm on. Well, no, I know why I'm on the count because it's you know Halloween and looking at all the various costumes out there. I was looking at capes. Again, for the whole Doctor Strange thing. We did have a cape. Wasn't sure it was going to work, so I was looking at capes, and if you type in vampire, that seems to be the best way to find a good full cape for a Halloween costume. And there was this one little baby costume. It was uh, the Count from Sesame Street, which, hello, it was really cute. That's how the Count got in my head. I was going to say, I haven't watched Sesame Street with the kids in God, a couple years now, at least. I think that's the back part. There we go. But yeah, tonight should be fun because uh, coincidentally, our family campaign, we have a uh, gold wormling. And let me just wash this one off. And the thing my husband will do because we have, it's basically. We have our main PCs, which is my character and our two boys' characters. However, because we're sailing to different islands and everything like that, we have a crew, and the crew helps us sail the ship and also get into the encounters. So we'll trade off our own PCs for the crew members and play them, and like it's sort of like it's sort of like splitting the party, but not splitting the party. So the youngest got a chance to play our gold wormling, and he did some serious damage to one of the orc ships. And, uh, yeah, I flipped to a fine tip brush to get the face in, as opposed to a flat brush. I usually start with a small flat brush when I'm doing detail work, or before I'm doing detail work, I mean. Um, so yeah, he was, uh, having fun setting ships on fire and orcs on fire, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm so proud. <laughs> you're doing all this damage. Good job. Probably the only time is a mom, you're like, yes, you're, you're killing things, and you're destroying things, and you're setting things on fire. Then the other one jumped in with his fire spell, setting things on fire, and then my PC started setting things on fire with her arrows, and yeah, we're, we're a whole bunch of pyros, is essentially what we learned over the weekend. But it definitely got me excited for playing a silver dragon. Yes, a ghostly, ghastly, ugly, swirly, whirly face. Now I'm gonna add this night blue to the cape. I wanted to make sure this stayed more of a blue purple as opposed to a red tone purple. So I want to base it in a blue. Let's see here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, Jeremy, that really sounds like a cool. I gotta go find that afterwards, read more up on it. Okay, so here we go. Starting with this, the cape is not going to stay this blue, it's going to switch over to being purple. But I like to play with undertones a lot with paints to make sure it's translating into the final color look I want to get. So you'll see me put something as a base color which may not make any sense or may seem too colorful or too off the mark, but once you start getting the other layers on it, it'll start making more sense. I will get um, some messages sometimes, especially with uh, terrain tutorials. Aw, thank you, John. Appreciate it, too. Very kind of you. I'm sorry, Jeremy, you were saying. Uh, Chris Perkins does that on dice camera action. Oh yeah, no, that is fun to watch when he switches things up, up with uh, his players too, I agree. 
absolutely agree. I actually haven't finished last week's. Ooh, and they just were last night. God, it's Wednesday already. Crazy. So basically, I'm bringing the blue all the way around both sides of the cape. I'm sure songs with blue are probably jumping into your head. Maybe. Yeah, no, not fire tip. Fire tip is going to cause problems. <laughs> Though granted, there have been times where I've taken a uh, hot manicure tip to a mini before to kind of fix a uh, spur of plastic here and there. However, make sure you're in a well-ventilated room when you do that. You hold your breath for safety. <laughs> Wear a mask was even better. Yeah, no, sometimes I find it helps just to sort of melt things down a little bit with a smaller, could do like a nail even. There we go, bringing it back to the fact that she's a pyro sometimes. It does get interesting in the back here, trying to determine what is the skirts and what's the cape. Come to think of it, I didn't really think about what I was going to do for... When we have the chain now, that's sort of a derp. Silver. Hmm. Oh, I know what I'll do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to make this all blue and then do two different colors for the cape and then for the robes. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> hey, Chris! How you doing, buddy? Long time no speak. So yeah, I'm, I've, I've decided I'm going to use this uh, night blue as the base color for the cape and for the robes underneath the armor. Give me a little update. And you don't want to glop your paint on. That's never, ever a good idea. Because then you start mucking up your uh, finer details. Better to do a few thin coats and go back to it than uh, a big old thick coat. And there go all of your little details. And this is with any paint. Any paint you're using. Don't get too heavy-handed. For those of you who are in the chat, we're... What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> For those of you in the chat uh, learning how to get into painting, do make sure you get over to Game Trade Media. They're very active on Facebook, also on Twitch, and I th they do have a YouTube presence, too. Uh, they have Painting Happy Little Minis, and that's a really great show to watch because uh, it's kind of this you know similar concept here. They uh, sit and chat with each other, and they have minis that they'll get painted in about an hour. And they talk about the different colors and the line, which is really very cool. So do go and check out that channel as well. Rick's a sweet guy, as is Dave. And they'll have guests on to paint. Good stuff. Hold on. I got to pull out a frame because I, you know, I need to see. Oh, speaking of seeing. We uh, got the oldest to the eye doctor yesterday. He's partially colorblind, which floored me because he's, you know, he loves painting everything too. Uh, did I get the VCAM yet? No, I was waiting for this, this month's Patreon to follow through. I have to get it uh, switched over. And then V-Vision should be a thing very soon. I, it looks like I will be getting my GoPro in time for Mace and for PAX Unplugged. So I'm very excited for that. And I think I have some applications I can use it for here. And let's see, uh, Chameleon, do you have Theater of the Mind with the kids? Oh, oh, we do like full out, huge table, tons of stuff on the table. Um, I do have a Facebook group where I'll post pictures of when we're playing in game. And I do a couple onto the Facebook page for the channel as well. Uh, if you wanna go onto Facebook and check that out, or I think every so often I put it up on Twitter as well. Well, hello, Nicholas. Did I make a mini for the dwarf? 
yes, I did have a dwarf made up. I custom made her on Hero Forge and then my husband printed her out for me on our 3D printer. And it worked out really well. My Gemma, I love her, my little tinkerer. I can't wait to play her again. Uh, hopefully sometime in the future we can get the band back together, so to speak, and do that. Um, but yeah, for the family games, it's, it's a production. It is a huge production with terrain and miniatures and props and game accessories. We really, we really get into it with the kids and they enjoy it and they get a big kick out of it. And, uh, pretty much most of the videos where you see me making terrain and scatter, that's stuff that gets put right into our collection for using in our own games. That's where a lot of those get their time to shine. Really, it's mostly the online games where it's theater of the mind for me. All right. Thank you, John, for stopping by. Hope you have a good rest of the day at work. All right. Almost done getting the base blue onto the robes and cape. That green's drying nicely, so I'm going to start switching back over to that probably. This guy has a lot of nooks and crannies underneath. Yeah, what I can do is, uh, actually, she's not too far away. Maybe towards the end of this, because what time? Well, we have a half hour. So towards the end, what I'll do, uh, Nicholas, is I'll go and I'll grab Gemma and I'll show her to you guys. But yeah, I was really happy with her because Hero Forge lets you create these custom minis. And then you have the option of ordering the mini from them and they'll print it out and send it to you. And I want to say that's $20, not including shipping, I don't think. And then, um, you can opt to have the file sent to you and that is, I believe, $10. And then if you have a 3D printer, you can just get it set up to print from your own printer, which worked out really well because it printed out in a couple hours and I was able to get her painted and we were able to pack her up and get out the door just in time. <laughs> that was, that was a huge time crunch factor for sure, because we we're getting ready to leave for Ohio. God, like two days after, not even something like that. Just making sure I'm getting every yeah, get a little spot I missed. Hang on a tick. All right. I think I got it all now. Of course, I'm saying that as I'm spinning it around looking for missing spots. Yes, yay for baby. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. That was, um, that was my husband's creation. And we knew we were getting together with, um, Wylock and Scotty. And it was one of those things where he just kind of came up with the idea one night and he presented us with like four different scenarios. And we all jumped on the dude, where's my cart one. And he just, uh, wrote it up. It was great. Let's see, and you have a nine and a 10 year old, you wanna try Theater of the Mind. Uh, with the younger ones, if you're gonna do Theater of the Mind, it will help to have some points of reference still. I'm all over the chat, sorry guys, I'm like reading up and down. Um, so that's where, you know, I would make sure you have maps or at least have photo printouts of the NPCs that they're meeting and things like that, just to kind of help add a little bit something more tangible for them. Cause at that age, they still are very much visual learners and visual retention. So you, do, you don't you do wanna have it completely abandoned. Uh, when they get a little bit older, you can do it, obviously. But at that age, yeah, I wouldn't say completely give up the whole using visual aids. Let's put it that way. Uh, you'll have better luck with that. So here we go. Right now he's looking like the school colors to my high school mascot. We're gonna be fixing that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, between 20 and 60, depending on material. What did I miss here? Looks like that's a side conversation. I'll say okay on that one. All right, so now I'm gonna do, how's his face doing? Ooh, that's drawing a nice creepy dead color. I'll let that dry a little bit more though before I go back in. Uh, let me get, did I not pull the gray out? I didn't pull the gray out. I'm just gonna do the gray on the chain mail before I shift to a metallic, not the cold gray. 
Stonewall gray. That sounds right. That sounds like the one I want to. All right, so I'm putting gray on the, the chain mail and the helmet and the sword. And I'm using the Stonewall gray. And don't forget, this is all Vallejo. Just a couple drops. I thought I was forgetting a color. Oh well, used to have my little handy dandy carrying kit right there. All right, so this is going to go on to these chainmail like sleeves. Ooh. It's got a little bubble in it that was hidden by that. I'm going to go very thin with this. I'm also going to take it up onto the gauntlet armor for this gray. Because those I'm going to paint up to look like different uh, metals. sword on here. Oh, for Hero Forge. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, depending on the material, thank you. Uh, we tend, well, I was honestly just looking at the uh, cheaper plastic stuff at the time. But yeah, Hero Forge, I, I do like the whole customizing factor, because that was pretty cool to be able to do that and so quickly. And we, we do make use of our 3D printer a lot. I mean, this was 3D printer and it's going to be part of the Halloween costume. So it's one of those things where, you know, in this house, the 3D printer is a great tool for crafting. It definitely helps us enhance things with builds and different monsters and characters we need. In between things you can get on Thingiverse and whatnot, it's a help. Especially since my husband does so much uh, homebrew stuff, there'll be a night where he just sort of comes up with a concept and then he's off and he's printing that mini for the next day's game. Hello, big brother, how are you doing? Greetings and salutations right back at ya. Nice to see you again. Right now I'm putting gray on the Ghost King. Surprise, surprise. A ghost involving gray. I did try watching, oh, what's that Fred Savage movie with the monster? Totally blanking on the name. Tried watching it with my youngest and I think it's still just a little bit too creepy for him. I could tell he was getting a little agitated with a couple of the scenes. But, of course, he said, you know what, we can stop this, because this, this is kind of a little gross. And I know you don't like gross. I was like, okay, yeah, thank you for stopping, because you're right, I don't like gross. But, yeah, he kind of tapped out. It was cute. All right. So, of course, this gray is almost a white, so it's hard to tell. But I'm also putting on, because I figured with it being a ghost, his armor is going to be kind of glowing. I'm going to put the same gray on this helmet. As well. Mm, picked up a little blue there. <laughs> Mr. Hawk. Sounds like a James Bond scenario now. Greetings, Mr. Hawk. All right. Well, if anything, we've got him with his base colors now. Which, again, don't get too used to or attached to because that's going to change soon enough. <laughs> hello, Closet Geek. How are you? And hello, Georgie. Thank you for jumping in. Little Monsters, thank you. Probably was, probably, I was thinking about that, but it felt wrong because every so often I jokingly call our little guy, you little monster. He's, he's, he's going to be the one to keep me on my toes as he gets older. Let's put it that way. 
<laughs> Big Brother is always watching you. I'm watching you, always watching you. That's who I think of whenever I hear that phrase. Monsters Inc. Let me just make sure before I say, yep, there's a little bit of cape I missed. Switch to find it. Switching over. Hey, Jake. Long time no see, especially for you. <laughs> say hi to Jake, everybody. DM and player extraordinaire over at Mini Terrain Domain. I get to be a drag, well, a wormling. Nice promo slide. Well, I make sure those get in so the information gets out. That's why I bug you for them every so often, because I want to put them into this thing. Get the word out. That's way too much paint. No, no, no. We don't need that much for the little spot. Okay. Now we have all the base colors on. Ta-da! Okay, so here we go. Looking quite flashy. I gotta say, the pose of this cracks me up. It's like, wee! <laughs> And I did have to put him into a hot water to cold water bath because there were a couple little cockeyed uh, dips and uh, shifts to the sword especially and the one hand. So for anyone who's not familiar with that, if you ever have a mini that's kind of all cockamamied out of the box, what I do is I actually boil a bowl of water in the microwave, fill a bowl up, you know, like just the cereal bowl. And then, yeah, hi Jake to Jake. <laughs> And then you just want to make sure that's a nice hot bowl of water. And then while that's warming up, get another bowl, same size, filled with ice cold water. You're going to put the mini into the bowl and the hot water bowl first. And you're going to take it out. Usually I take a pair of tongs. And before you put it into the hot water, make sure you hold whatever it is you want to straighten out into it with the cold water. And it helps get everything finished out. Yeah, Jake, look who's in the chat. Look, they're here too. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by, Chameleon fam. I'll let Jake do the ooh. He does it far better than I can do it anyways. Have a great day. Don't forget, there's a game tonight too. Nine o'clock. All right, I'm going to shift over to Sick Green. Again, another appropriate name. <laughs> I love it when they jump around like that. That's fun. Like, hey, I know that guy. I know that guy. Little things. It's the little things, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back now with this sick green and go back to the exoskeleton armor. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like a scorpion. There we go, the scorpion ghost king. Does that work? Not really. Da -da -da -da. Did I miss anything? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. I'm still actually going to stick with the wider brush, and I'm pulling down and keeping it above the surface. What I'm not going to do now is go back in to paint in deeply. So it's sort of like a heavier-handed dry brush is the best way to think about this. And again, this is this is a ghost, so I wanted it to have sort of this creepy, eerie, green, glowing ectoplasm. That's the word I've been looking for. All right, thanks for stopping by. Watch the game tonight. Do the thing. Yes, because BJ's going to be in it too. I'm so excited for this group of people. I really am. I'm really excited to play tonight with everyone. <laughs> Just get this side and I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. So you can see that tone, that green down a lot. A lot, a lot. It's also bringing out some of those edge details that's happening on it, too. But basically, I want this guy to look like this nightmarish, ectoplasmic demon type of dude. And meet for corns tonight. You betcha, Jake. I'm gonna fight the orcs. And 
And again, for those of you who uh, may not be able to make the games live, they do get recorded and you can watch them after the fact on Mini Terrain Domain. There's comments and everything if you want. All right, cool. So that, oops, one little section. There we go. Okay, so that's that's it with the uh, sick green. Let me get this brush cleaned off. Doodly do. Yeah. You know what I think I might do with the robes? Hmm. What am I gonna do for the robes? I gotta think about that. I don't wanna make it purple like the cape or the cloak or whatever. I wanna make that a little bit different. She lies. It's 2 a.m. Uh, well, yeah, it's 2 a.m. for you, dude. <laughs> oh, for the game tonight, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Although I do know some people who have set alarms to wake up and watch games and live streams before, which I give you major credit for doing. Those of you over in Europe, thank you very much. That is above and beyond dedication. You know what I might do? I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back in with the dark green and put that onto the robes. Yeah. Yep. That is exactly what I'm doing. And then what I'll do is I'll highlight that with a limeish green. Well, a lime green, not limeish. There we go. It's going to give it a slightly different green tone, but still kind of give it that ectoplasm that I want to go with. So we've kind of moved past doing a base coat and now I'm doing a mid-layer is what I call for my own sanity, a mid-layer grade, because there's more I'm going to be doing color-wise. So I've gone back to using the dark green from Vallejo and I'm putting it over the robes. I'm not putting it onto the cape though. The cape, we're going to do the purple in just a minute. But this alters the tone of the green just enough so you don't have like the same color working everywhere, which I don't want to do. Glad you like it! Yeah, it will be fun once we get the uh, GoPro in my possession. Because I want to play around with it, obviously, before I take it anywhere. We'll see what it can do. I might even take it to a couple of the soccer games just to kind of play with uh, shooting in a crowd and getting the settings figured out. But especially, especially with Mace coming up, I want to make sure we had something that was... Uh, helpful because we have a game that's going on that Friday night where it's for auction if people want to sit down and play with us and there's a little information card that's going on at the bottom uh, for that it's one night in Richter Cemetery I always want to say Riker like Rikers Islands Rikers Island and uh, what we do want to try and do because DM Jim is going to be bringing terrain for that we want to be sure we can do a live stream so that people can see the layout and because of that, I really do want to be sure... Yeah, that's part of the robe. I want to be sure that we have a good means of filming the table. And while I do have two different webcams, they don't really have good, like, wide shoot aim, so to speak. Whereas the GoPro does. So what I'm hoping is we can use the... Oh, I see what this is doing. Um, we can use the GoPro to shoot the table layout. So you can get a broader scope of that. And then uh, we use one of my webcams for the people sitting at the table. So you can see us and you can see the table. Theoretically. <laughs> Fingers crossed it works out. And then we will air it. I think we'll probably aim for Scotty's channel just by default since he has a larger following. That way it's kind of hitting the most people at once. But the, the sticky wicket's going to be 
the connection at the hotel. All right, here we go. So there's the dark green put over that night blue for my mid-tone for the robes, and it's getting that nice mottled look to it too, which I was hoping would stay after doing that black on there. So it looks like the robes are mildewing. <laughs> Tried to set the alarm, didn't quite make the whole thing. Yeah, it's, you know, it's tough. I have to do the same thing with Critical Role. I have tried. There is absolutely no way I can stay up, first of all, to 10 o'clock at night and then make it to 2 a.m. It just doesn't jive. So usually for me with Critical Role, I'm watching it the next day, sometimes a few days later just because of my own schedule as to when I can watch things. But, all right, now I'm going to move on to doing... I'm going to put the blue away. I don't need this anymore. Put that away. One last thing to look at. All right, let's get the royal purple for the robes. I'll do that. Nicholas, are you still kicking around in there? If you are, I'll go and I'll get Gemma. Let's do a couple drops to be safe. I will say, it is nice having the uh, dropper style for paints so that you're not using a whole bunch. Well, unless, you know, it's <laughs> clogged. <laughs> All right. So royal purple is now going onto his robes. Yoink. And a little of this color is going to go a long way. Sometimes I find when you go to work with purples, they don't take very well right away. But now this is giving me a blue-purple tone, like I wanted as opposed to a red-purple. I didn't want this to look too Christmassy with a red-purple and the greens together. Yeah. That's kind of, kind of been my MO too, Chet. I try and stay on top of it. I just finished up yesterday, I want to say. I finished watching yesterday. Uh, it's just, uh, don't get me wrong, I love the show, but my body cannot stay awake and focused that long. I mean, granted, I can stay up to 11 playing a game, but that's different because you're like, you're actively engaged in it. So it's sort of by default, it keeps you awake and going. But yeah, that's where it's like I try and uh, stay away from the spoilers and whatnot. You know, every so often something will happen and you really can't avoid finding out just by nature of things. But I gotta say, for the most part, people are pretty good about keeping hush-hush. Usually until about Monday, it seems to be the unsaid rule, which is understandable. Because that's where they flip it over to YouTube so everyone can watch it who missed it if they aren't following on Twitch. Ah, oh, moves to 5k. I know, it's crazy. Just looking at that this morning, it's like, okay, we're, we're plugging along there too. So yeah, the channel is, what is it, 4,820 something, I think it was, somewhere in that count. So if you're a fan of the channel and you want to help the channel get to 5k, share it. Let your friends know. I do things. I make things. I like to make things. Yeah, once we're done with this today, I gotta finish up working on uh, what I'm using for this week's video. Which definitely goes with a spooky Halloween theme. Hopefully you'll like it. Awkward angle. He's got a lot of nooks and crannies. Now I know no one's really going to be looking at this me like, hmm, let me see. But. <laughs> 
You've fallen asleep a few times watching Critical Role 2. Georgie. It's not from uh, the content, it's more from the fact that my body is exhausted by that time of day. So yeah, I wait until I can watch it the next morning and then I'm bright and chipper and getting things done and tra-la-la. -la. All right, yes. Ooh, see, a little fold. But yeah, that's the purple I wanted. Great. I do need to switch to a fine tip because of this one section in the front. And that cape will be done. Alright, here we go. So that's what the cape all filled in now. And this is obviously going to be getting some highlights on it. What I'll do first is, now that I have the true purple color I want, it's going to get the wash once the rest of it gets painted in. And then I'll go back in and I'll be doing the highlighting of that. Again, to make it look creepy and eerie as well. Let's see here. We still have a little bit of time left. I think what I will do is... To paint the sword. Look at the sword painted up. Let's go with that. Which means I need the purple off the brush. Yeah. Well, you know that crazy thing called parenthood. <laughs> kind of wears you out by the end of the evening, especially with younger ones. Alright, so for the sword, I'm going to do or I want to do tinny tin. So I'm going to put tinny tin on to the sword and I might put it onto a couple pieces of the helmet. If you heard that, that was a cat sneezing. A couple drops of that. Actually, yeah, it's right underneath the table. That's why. Okay. So this is more of a bronzy red, which I thought for a ghost king would be rather cool for a weapon. Ooh, I like that. Oh, that's a nice color. So we'll get this painted up. See what else I can hit with this color that I want to. And I think we'll call it a day on this guy. And finish him up next week. That's how we'll do it. Which that'll be, what I'm going to do is in between I'm going to do a wash, a brown wash. And then uh, we'll get the fine details taken care of next week on him. That's the game plan for next lunch break live stream. Which hopefully you can join us. And if not, I do make sure that this goes up so you can watch it after the fact. Do, do, do. section did not want to take the paint. Oh yeah, this is an awesome color. It's going to be careful in this one section because the sword almost touches Muck it up. Awkward angle. This is why I like putting my minis on medicine bottles filled with sand because you get a good weight in your hand, so when you have to do these oddball angles, it makes it a little bit easier, and I just attach them on with uh, blue fun tack, so it pulls away nicely. I 
I'm pulling this paint a little bit more thinly up the blade. I don't want it to be as intense of that red. There we go. Bye, Chad. Thanks for coming by. Hopefully to see you next week. I'm almost done with this. Oh, hold on. No, we don't want to paint with cat hair. Thank you, Vince. Glad you like it. Right now it's just sort of in its, uh, in the middle mode, essentially. I don't want to put this on too thickly under the blade itself. There we go. You missed a spot. Again, one of those spots no one else is going to see, but I see it. Dang it. Okay. There's the silhouette. And it's like this sort of like reddish bronze, which is really nice. So that's definitely the base for the sword. I'm going to do more with it once it gets uh, its wash on it and kind of go back and highlight more. But I think at this point, I might just take some more of that and put it onto the helmet. Thank you for stopping by, big brother. I appreciate it. I like these wing-like things on his helmet. I'm going to paint those in this color. Strikes me as fun. Oh yeah. I like these. like Shredder's helmet. Now that I'm painting it. Name that cartoon. Little bit the same onto his helmet, which I'm liking the look of that too. And I think we're gonna call it for now on this dude. And I'll get a wash on him once he's dry enough, and then come back here next week, same time, same place, different day. Date, I should say, not day, still Wednesdays. And I'll go through, I'm gonna do the finer work detail in terms of highlighting him up, getting that robe to look like flowing robes, and all that loveliness, because I love playing up the fabrics a lot. And uh, by the time we're done next week, he will be all set and ready for some spookiness later this month. So that is it from me. If you have any questions, you can always comment below in this or you can email me. And everything else that we've talked about, I'll make sure are in the description for you guys. Links and all that good stuff. And hey, if you have the evening free tonight, don't forget to stop by Mini Terrain Domain, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And you can watch us play One Floor of the Cockatrice's Nest, where it's a whole bunch of wormlings getting out of the orcs. What is it? Camp? <laughs> Warren, as uh, Jacob put in. It should be a lot of fun, though. I'm looking forward to doing that. So that is it for me for today. Thank you again, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.